Okay, so uh, we got our post working last time when we were able to write things to the database. So we've got that code here. Uh, you may notice that when we ran this post, put a different one in. Let's just get this running again. Okay, so we post, we get back a 200 OK, sorry, we're on a break point. Let's see where we're at here. Okay, we get a 201 created back, and we get this URL, or this URI saying go, the new person, the new resource created is at this location. And it always brings back, when we click that, it always brings back Sam Smith. Now the reason for that is because in our get code right here, we are creating the object and return it no matter what ID. So we need to change this now to, to do the get and actually bring back the, the person for that ID, right? So that's what we're going to do just right now. So what we need to do is add some code in our persistent class to get the person. So let's stop our debugger and go over here to person persistence and we're going to add a public get person method that is going to return a person object that's, that's um, populated and of course it's going to take in the ID Um, our person model actually has the ID as a long, so let's carry that through. Use a long here. Okay, and then what we're going to do um, is this. Get a new person object. And MySQL has some calls to go using a reader to go get data from the database. So we will use that. We'll use one of those. And we'll build up a SQL string just like we did before. And it's pretty easy. Select, we'll say select star, so we'll bring back everything from table personnel, which is our table, where the ID is whatever was passed into us. Two string on that. So there's our SQL. And there's a MySQL client command, just like we did again in the other one. So we're going to get an instance of one of those. passing it, the SQL string, and our database connection. This is, again is where we're, we have an advantage in having the database connection already built for, for us when we instantiate one of these. And then we'll just take MySQL reader, 
and have it get whatever comes back from execute reader, which is another way that we can access the database. And then we'll just simply say, well, if if we got, and this code is all related to how the SQL, the MySQL classes are working to get the data from the database. So in other words, if we got back the data, then So get the first thing that came back, or the first column that came back. It should be zero, not one. And then the first name. So this is all just positional. Um, maybe not the best way to do this, but it gets us going for now. We can come back and refine it a little bit later. So this is going to be my SQL reader, and these are going to all be get strings until we get down to the dates. So so that's in the second position. Now we're our pay rate is a double. in the fourth parameter and we're down to dates so we have a get date time fortunately that's the fifth parameter and finally the end date is my SQL reader get date time and that's the sixth and final field and then we will just return P and if we didn't get anything back so in other words if the, that query didn't succeed and return some data and what we're going to do is return a null Okay, so now we have a routine called get person that takes an ID and will give us back a person object. So now in our controller, in our get, we can do, we can get us a person persistence class. And we can say that the person is going to be person persistence get person passing in the ID. And this again ought to be a long here instead of an int, right? Let's go ahead and change that. Be consistent with our types. And then we don't need any of that. We just go ahead and return person. Okay, so now we should be able to go get something. So let's run this. Now, when we go after this person here with a get, we should get the right data back. Just bringing this up. And here we go. Launching. As that comes up, we can try our get here. And 
All right, we're ready now. So let's go ahead and try it. We get back an OK. And now we're getting back the data that we intended. So if you remember person 8, go get that. Jill Boyd. So let's go ahead now and try to do a post again. Let's put in a value. Something like this, Sam Jones. So we'll post this. We should get back a 201 created. And in the header information should be the URI to get to where we need to go. And it looks like we've got a problem there in that URI that we need to fix. So we'll need to work on that. But if we do a git on that, you'll notice that gets back the one that we just added. So we've got a little bit of a bug to fix there. We'll look at fixing that and also moving on to uh, two other things we got to do is put and delete. And then we will have finished the full array of everything that we needed to do for REST. So hopefully this has been useful to you to get us to the point where we can read and write data. We'll also go after getting more data back and then subsequent sessions we'll look at some different clients that we can use to get the data rather than just using the DHC tool. So hopefully you've been following along. I will be posting up uh, some blog posts about this with uh, the source code attached so that you'll have that if you'd like to look through that as well.